after a few minutes announcing a launch this week, and the response is amazing. So many people are curious and excited for me. This was my first real action for the last year. I finally feel like I'm getting into action. Alyssa says, I had more interaction today than I have ever had on Facebook. It was an eye-opening experience, learning how to leverage social media to work for me mm -hmm. and my business. 10 hours of training literally felt like 10 minutes. Wow. I know, right? I agree. I said the same thing to Nadia. Flew by. Uh, it was simply amazing. Scott says, my first selfie post this morning has over 30 comments. I've never got that many comments before. Plus, I had a lot of people reach out, and I even used the ATM method for the what? first time. I got five people added to our group. You stop it Boom. some more. April says, one new team member signed, <laughs> two new signing today, more orders yesterday, and that's all. Amazing. I've, and that's, wait, yesterday than I've had all month, and I feel like I finally have a plan and know what I'm doing. I like this one. <laughs> Quarantine at home, so might as well level up my marketing <laughs> skills. Hashtag social marketing live. I yes. love it. You guys, so we wanted to feature <laughs> randomly a couple of you. Oh, Elaine says, I think this is the most views one of my, one of my stories has had. 52. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? <gasps> you guys sweating? I'm sweating already. I was hoping to Smell hold it. on to my optimal juices to later today, but Woo. forget about it. <laughs> Stop if you bite your tongue. All right, guys. So all of these beautiful winners, we're gonna bless you today. We're gonna give you some cash for these random selections. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Keep the results flowing. For those of you guys that haven't had a chance to share yet your champagne moments, we've been singing. Can we talk about that, please? Because does it inspire your, your own energy? Hello? But also, does it inspire the rest of the community? Uh, heck yes, exclamation point, please. That's right. So drop into the comments. Let us know what has been your biggest takeaway or your most proud moment even. Now, don't be getting compared by this either. Right. right? Because yes, there's going to be some people that are getting maybe bigger results. And I want to just remind you and ground you in the fact that you are where you are in your journey. And let us not compare the back of our house to maybe the front of somebody else's house, right? So let us keep all things in perspective. But I have to say, on behalf of three of us, we're so very proud of the fact that you are putting yourself into action and ultimately right? That is what counts. You got to be prideful about that. You got to step it up. You got to mess it up. And just, you know what? You just got to just not take yourself so serious. That's I know right. for me <laughs> in the beginning, I just really love to get things done perfectly. How many of us also suffer it's a little true. bit true. from perfectionitis syndrome? Mm -hmm. Yes. And then, um, and I'm really grateful that John would be like, baby, just do it already. Just you know what I mean? Just, just go ahead. Figure it out later. Version 1.0 is better than version so, 0.0. That's yes, right. Yes. Embrace the suck. Embrace the suck. Mm -hmm. You're going to suck at first. It's okay. What helped me to think through it is I would think to myself, okay, if I step it up, I mess it up, right? Worst case scenario, this is going to be hilarious comedic value six months from now. You're going to have to create some content that you can reference back and be like, dude, can That's you right. believe? Can you believe? <laughs> yeah, I like sharing my old videos for uh, the comedic value. Exactly. Comedic value. Yeah. You gotta have it. Those are really bad. Yeah. Not the worst. I, I say some good things. It's not the worst content, but the phone. Just the like, ankles, baby. You can see up my nose. There's too much information. We don't want to know. Big, gaudy <laughs> sunglasses. It's really bad, but I don't delete. I leave them up there. Just, yeah. you know, so people can see, hey, we all start somewhere. Yeah. I think that's beautiful. So let's talk branding and then give away some cash. Some Very cash good giveaway. Cash. Okay, so that's already, that's already done? Yeah, those were the winners. So what do they have what to do? Explain that to me. See, I'm out of the loop. I, you know, it's probably because I wasn't listening. It's probably part of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two women against one guy here. <laughs> right. Exactly. That's true. Oh, that's yeah, Congratulations to those winners. Yeah. 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 So you yeah. have to 
claim? What do, what do we have to do? Are we not to, do to claim? Beautiful question. All you got to do is send an email to our support team, support at mylifestyleacademy.com. Also, we have Bam, who is right now with us, and she's going to reach out to those winners as well. Sometimes it goes to the filter folder, though, so we should check that. Okay, good. That's true. And we need your PayPal. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's yeah right. it's a question that already know. We didn't do such a great job at introducing this, but our support team has been super fabulous in here answering a lot of mm -hmm. comments and questions. And some of you guys might be wondering, like, who's answering this? But there, there are support staff that has been um, in here helping us all weekend and actually throughout the entire um, launch of this this event helping with the PDFs and the designs and making sure everything gets done on time for us mm -hmm. so as far as um, I just want to give a huge shout out to my team and then John and Nadia I want to give a shout out to your guys' team just for being here and helping out so in here you're gonna see Abby um, she worked with me you're gonna see Ismary a lot of you guys know Ismary she's been with me for like ever um, you also see Ruth and um, those lady bosses have been so amazing with us um, at the Tanya Eliza team. So the Meltons will also have a fabulous team. We've all been working together. So if you guys want to give a shout out to your support staff. Yes, thank you guys. Thank you guys. We love you. Yeah, Ben, Kyle, Mighty, all of you. Desi, Desi. absolutely, yeah. Crushing it. Yeah, thank you guys for helping us. We really appreciate it. Being fun. Behind great people, there are, are always other great people mm -hmm. helping out. So we work to, together as a team to make it all happen for you guys. Um, so that's, are you guys ready to dive in? Are you ready to talk yeah. about it? Yeah, we're ready. We're absolutely ready. All right, baby, let's talk about it. Tanya is going to be teaching branding. What are your thoughts about that? I mean, branding is, is, the foundation of everything we've done over the last seven years or so. You know, we started doing videos online. We started putting out content because we wanted to attract people. I mean, how many of us got to a point where we were sick and tired of having to find people to prospect for our business, right? You want to get to a point where you have unlimited people to talk to, you have people reaching out to you. You want to have maybe different ways of monetizing down the road. And, you know, even if you say, well, I'm not building a personal brand, you still have a brand, even if you're not building one. Yeah. Because when someone meets you or they hear about you, what do you think they do? They search you up on Facebook or Instagram. They check out your profile. Maybe they Google you. Yeah. They're going to look you up. Right. So they're going to see either a great brand because you've worked on it over a sustained period of time to develop it, or uh, they're going to see, you know, cat pictures, right? They're going to see some, some stuff that maybe you wouldn't want them to see. And I think in today's day and age, a lot of people are aware of the value of building a personal brand. How many of you feel like you've been you know, developing your brand and putting out content to market your products, market yourself, mm -hmm. right? You provide value, you do videos, you show up in stories. And how many of us maybe feel like you kind of have an idea, but you're not really building a brand? You've heard about it, you've thought about it, but I'm telling you, there is no one better and Tanya Eliza, you know, she's created right. programs, some of the best programs in the industry. I mean, I know top, top six and seven figure earners that give their credit to Tanya because of her, her videos, her content, her training, mm -hmm. they started building personal brands. And it's really powerful once you grasp this concept yeah. and you start showing up where it's not about making money, it's about making an impact, making a difference, helping people solve problems. That's really all entrepreneurs do, right? You watch, watch Shark Tank. Right, every single company that comes on there, every product, they're they're essentially solving a problem. And if you go out there with the mindset of how you can help other people, and you make it about you know something bigger than just making a buck, you build that personal brand over time. You'll never have to worry about number one. You'll never have to worry about finding people to talk to about your business. But number two, you'll never have to worry about money. And that's that's what excites me because I knew that I was going to be in network marketing for a very long time. And I also knew that as much as I was loving the company that I was in, uh, at the time I started building a brand, I kind of felt like there was that glass ceiling. And I also felt like if I ever moved or ever made a decision to go somewhere else, I would want to know that I don't have to like start from scratch, that I already have this huge audience of people that knows me, that trusts me, that would partner with me and buy from me. So there's, there's so many reasons why you want to build a brand. Uh, but again, it does start with just, you know, how can you make a difference? How can you help people solve problems? And there's nobody better than the one, the only team that has. 
Right. Woo you guys over the years have built a solid brand as well. And I think that before I really get into the nitty gritty and pull some slides up, I think that it's important to state that some people are going to get overwhelmed when we talk about branding because they're going to think that they need to have professional pictures and they need to look really good and they need to be perfect. And I want to let you know what I think branding means to me. And um, yeah, sure, I've been branding myself. I was branding myself before I even knew I was branding myself, but you guys are all branding yourselves before you even know you're really branding right. yourself. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's just, so branding is nothing about me. It's nothing about you. It has everything to do about the value that you just bring into the marketplace. Right. And so there's ways to tighten up a brand but your brand is the value that you bring out into the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And there's a really good book called A Brand Called You that I love talking about when I talk about branding. I was at an event, I believe it was the event that I actually met um, John and Nadia at, we were at Ray Higgins event. I think he had Peter Montoya up yes. as a speaker. So yes. he wrote that book and that keynote that Peter had, that Peter did on stage, I would have paid a thousand plus more dollars for just that one talk on branding. It was so good. So it really has to do with just understanding how you can show up consistently and deliver good value to make people feel good and help people through life and through their career, right. um, or through their life, right? And so, I want you guys to completely take a lot of weight off of what you think branding might be. It's not about professional pictures. Heck, I've seen people out there. In fact, I will tell you a story about when I very first met Ray. When I very first met Ray, uh, 10 years ago, um, we kind of grew up in the same little marketing community and I saw her one day talking about some good strategies on how to attract prospects or something like this. And I go to look him up and Ray at the, that time had one of the worst looking websites you could even imagine. His branding photos did not even exist. It was just like real, like selfie, terrible quality photos. And I, I would always make fun of him all the time. I would say, Ray, get a new website and that it looks terrible <laughs> and it didn't matter because right. it was still out producing everybody else that was out there he was still creating consistent content that it, that, that people found value in and it didn't matter the packaging and what it looked like it was just good helpful information and you all know where Ray is to this day and you know so when you look at you know people that are really crushing it they're not perfect and this was something that I had to learn. Um, so, you know, you don't have to look perfect. You don't have to have the super crazy branding photos. It's all about just showing up consistently and giving value. And uh, I think once I talk a little bit about this, you guys will really understand why branding is really important in your business and why you need to start implementing some of the strategies to brand yourself properly today. So are you guys fired up to talk a little bit of branding? Because if you are, I will kick it off. Okay. So here yeah, we everybody go. seems really excited. Okay, good. Okay. So there is a difference when it comes to branding yourself in network marketing versus like corporate branding or anything like that. Okay. So, um, give me one moment here. Okay, hold on. Okay, so, um, and, and this is a struggle sometimes for some people, uh, so I just really wanna make it easy. Remember yesterday we talked about what to post on social media, and I said, pick five things that you're just excited talking about, right? Build relationships with people, Try to attract your tribe, the people that are going to be most like you, people that you're going to be most excited to talk to, build a relationship with, and sit on a beach with toes in the sand and sit margaritas when you get, when you win your team incentive trips together, okay? So that's, you know, what I would say when it comes to creating content, um, what to revolve the content around. 
but why do you want to brand yourself in network marketing? So we're going to show you today places where you can go and find the perfect people, um, potential perfect people for you to work with in your network marketing business. Um, there is ways to reach out to influencers that we're going to talk a little bit about. Um, it is a highly impressive strategy and very, very results driven strategy for your business. It can explode volume for you super fast if you learn to do it right. But wouldn't you guys all agree that if you're recruiting up or you want to recruit up, like let's say on the socioeconomic ladder from one to 10, 10 being like most influential and one being not influential at all, where do you rate yourself on that scale? Okay, and you guys can drop it in the comment section if you're brave enough just to be honest and be like, I think I'm like a five or I think I'm like a six. But wherever you rate yourself on that scale, um, typically what happens in network marketing is if you think that you're a five on the socioeconomic ladder, you're typically gonna go talk to fours, threes, twos, and ones, because everybody likes to talk to people who are not that scary to talk to, right? So, you know, if, if, you're, if you're gonna be rating yourself at a five, and you're gonna go and talk to fours, threes, twos, and ones, let's say the three signs up with you, they're gonna talk to twos and ones, and two signs up or down, they're gonna talk to ones, what happens to your team, right? So this is why recruiting up is one of the best, fastest ways to success in network marketing. So a couple of things that you can do is get out of your comfort zone and start recruiting up, maybe using indirect scripts with them. Hey, who do you know that might be looking? Not necessarily asking them, asking their opinion or help. Who do you know? Um, or you just become more influential yourself and you should probably be better. And so for me, I started the network marketing when I was 26 years old, let's say, right? Yeah, 26, 27 years old. And I already look, I'm 38 now, I already look like I'm still, like I got ID'd to order a glass of wine at, the, at a bar like a month ago, <laughs> you know, it's in there with my 45 year old boyfriend and we, I got ID'd and you know, he didn't, I was like, oh, I'm feeling all flattered. But that means I still look extremely young. Who's gonna take somebody seriously that looks really young when it comes to doing business? That was my hang up in network marketing. So I said, I'm gonna elevate my influence. I'm gonna elevate my perceived authority and credibility. And so what you need to do, what, what you do when you're doing that, especially online, is to become an influencer. And to become an influencer, all you have to do is create good content consistently online that people like and show up consistently. Secret to success, consistency, okay? So this is all really branding yourself in network marketing revolved around you guys. Because when you're going out there and prospecting and, and talking to people, and then they kind of do a little snooping on you, you want them to find good things. You want them to see that you're taking your business seriously because if they see that, they have perceived authority and credibility in their mind and it makes it so much easier. It's not super easy, but it makes it easier to have those business conversations and people are listening to you. So this is why I believe branding is really, really important. Um, a lot of people ask me, well, Tina, do you lead with the product or do you lead with the business? Now, I used to train, like, pick one or the other. Now, I'm like, it's just lifestyle that we're all selling, really, right? We're all in different companies and network marketing here, right? All different companies. You guys want to know what? We're all doing the same thing. We are selling an increased value of lifestyle, whether it's with your products or whether it's with your business opportunity. We are all selling the same thing, right? It's kind of funny. So really, um, it doesn't really matter what you lead with. Um, I just find congruency in what it is that I'm talking about. So for me, my audience, my main audience, this kind of happened by, by default because I started to get good results in network marketing. So people were coming to me for like network marketing advice. So I'm kind of just 
become by default this network marketing trainer. I didn't really decide and say that I wanted to be. It just happened because I was, I was getting results there, and that's what I knew how to talk about. Plus, my background in marketing and sales. But that that might not be yours. You might have a background in fitness or yoga, and you really like talking about that. So really, um, sometimes even you guys, I find a, re- a way to relate like my products to my audience. Like people would think, well, all I talk about is business all the time. And that's not true. Like we have this really cool uh, new energy drink that came out in, uh, in our company. Sometimes I do Insta stories and I'm like, I got to get my, my energy on today. I've got a big business day. And you know, if you find yourself to be one of those like high functioning entrepreneurs, you need to really get through your day with clarity and mental function all day. Um, you know, these, these things are the bomb.com. And these are the things that help me get through my day, keep me on point. So I found a way to relate like my product, like an energy drink to like my business people, like my entrepreneurs, because I know that that's my tribe. So it's really how you, you can talk about your pro- benefits of your product and make it relate to your people. Um, or you can talk about the benefits of your business and make that relate to people. I used to really say, leave with one or the other, but really nowadays, we're all selling the same thing, better quality of life, whether it's the business opportunity or the products. Um, but what do you love sharing and talking about? So we talked about that yesterday. So whatever it is that you love sharing and talking about, share your experiences with your audience, right? Of you taking the product, show them you taking the product. Don't say the name of it. Don't say the name of the company, but be curiosity with what it does, like the benefits of everything that it is that you're doing. Marketers that do very well, and you guys, we're not work marketing. I'm going to talk a little marketing with you here. We, our job is to do two things, okay? And you, if this is all you learn today, okay? All you learn today, this is worth its weight in gold, okay? Our job is to do two things. Express and uh, express the benefits of what it is that we are selling business benefits or product benefits. Be talking benefits all day long. Benefits, benefits, not what it is, not the ingredients, not science about whatever it is. Thank God you can sort of suck at that. It's, it's benefits. You've got to speak in benefits. You got to know the benefits of what your product does for people, and you got to know what it is that your people really want, you know? And then as far as the business goes, the same thing. The second thing is our job as marketers is to take people where they are at right now, meet them and understand where they're at right now, and take them where it is that we know that they want to go. I'll give you an example. When we were marketing the social marketing recruiting boot camp, we knew all of the people's struggles in network marketing that, that, that you guys go through. Number one, we're network marketers ourselves. We have some of those same struggles, right? Um, but we hear you. Like, we are in the trenches with our team. We know what your struggles are. So we meet you where you're at, and then we take you where you want to go. We know that you guys want more leverage, more automation, more teammates, easier time recruiting people, right? So these are what we're, we're talking about, the benefits of what something can do. And that's why y'all are here, by the way, right? So what kind of information do you want to be known for as well? So as your brand starts to evolve, now in the beginning, this is so much fun in the beginning. Like I wish I was back in the beginning, you guys, because I loved the discovery of my brand. I didn't know what my brand was in the beginning. I was just throwing information out there and I was just like, okay, what do I enjoy? Like what's most, what's getting me excited most? What are my people really loving most? And it evolved to what it is today. So I love it when you guys are new because you're talking about all these things. It's going to evolve over time, right? So next year, your brand's going to look very different than it looks this year. And you might narrow it down to maybe like a little niche that you have. Maybe it's more health and nutrition, or maybe it's more beauty information, or maybe you love just talking about lifestyle and freedom. Maybe it is that you love talking about traveling and experiencing the world. Maybe it is that you 
um, really build the tribe around other moms or other dads, and that's who your little audience is. It'll evolve and it'll grow. And then all of a sudden, in like a couple of years, guys, this doesn't happen overnight, but in a couple of years, you're going to be known as the go-to person for XYZ information or entertainment. And this is just what happened with me over the years. It was like, you know, now I'm known as the go-to person for network marketing training and social media branding training for network marketers. Like, that's how I'm known. That didn't happen overnight. It kind of evolved and it took a little bit of time. But the key to this is showing up consistently for your audience, you guys. And I think I already was a little ahead of myself when I said that, but I know branding like back of my hand. <laughs> your brand will evolve over time. So your job with your brand, okay? Um, and Lewis asked, what if your brand is a potty mouth, dirty minded lunatic asking for a friend? <laughs> um, test it out. I don't, I don't know. I mean, that's the thing. You guys have seen it all, right? With brands out there. Um, there are brands out there that are exactly that, that are crushing it, that are doing so well. Um, you know, even taking a look at Gary Vaynerchuk, I mean, he is very colorful in his language. He is very real. He's very tell it like it is, and he's very successful. He has attracted all of the right people to him and repelled all of the wrong people away from him. And that is totally fine with your brand. Um, I would say be you and your, I mean, love what you do. That is the reason why. But then you also have to remember if you're in network marketing, you are representing another brand. So just be very, uh, be, be very aware of that as well. And obviously the company probably wants you to elevate their brand as much as possible as well. But you can definitely be real and have fun with it. If that's your personality type, shine in all colors as bright as you can with your personality type. Don't try to be somebody that you're not. Don't try to be somebody else. Um, be you and actually be more of you. Inject more of your personality through you, okay? Um, and that's the biggest tip. That's, that was a pivotal change in my business when I got online. I thought I had to be like really proper and professional. And the more I kind of stepped into my own quirkiness, I actually started to really uh, relate better with my people. Uh, if you guys follow me at all, you know that I have the worst grammar. Um, I make up words. Uh, I sucked as an English student. Uh, I, I didn't even pass college English. I think that's what kept me from like finishing college. I think that's exactly what it was. <laughs> so you guys, and you know, you don't have to be, be perfect. You have to just embrace your quirky to, to, to meet all of your financial goals that you possibly might have, right? And you, you, be, you would have more fun with it as well. And for those of you that say, um, a lot, I heard a lot of you guys say, well, on video, I say, um, and, uh, ah, uh, and I stop, like embrace the quirky. Just say, Hey guys, I'm, I say, um, a lot on my videos. I think that's okay. Chad, hey, let's make a challenge in this video. How many times did I say the word, um, <laughs> Like, I don't know, just have fun with it, right? People are bored online doing something fun to watch, doing something entertaining. Why do you guys watch John and Nadia together? Because they're hilarious sometimes, right? And I laugh and you're getting good value, but you're also entertained, which is very important. So describe your perfect customer or teammate. Um, this is something that um, I did, and I'm glad that I did, and I did this at a time where I was attracting all of the wrong people. Has anybody been in uh, a situation where they're like, I'm attracting all the wrong people. I don't like the energy that I'm attracting. Um, you know, so I was, uh, I was at a point where I was just tired with my team. I'll just be honest. Back in the day, I was just mad at my team. I was like, man, I they're not producing, I'm producing, I'm doing all this work. And so I just got really clear on who I wanted to attract. And then uh, I ended up just attracting those people. So if you don't know who you want to attract, write it down, like put a picture on your phone of like your team 
and you guys having like a ton of fun, like go find a hypothetical picture of everyone like on your team going, ah, and then include it in your vision board of what you want your team to look like. And what do you want them to emulate? Like, what do you want them to be, right? And then ask yourself, where are they hanging out? Okay, you guys, so I'm gonna give you, uh, I'm gonna give you something. So there's many places online that your perfect prospect is hanging out. Now we have, uh, and John and I are gonna make sure that this is uploaded and I want you guys to use this, but you guys get a part as a part of this uh, program, you're gonna get my influencer recruiting script book, okay? My influencer's recruiting script book. Now this is a three part, I think it's a three part script that you can use to reach out to influencers to get them to take a look or get excited to take a look at your products and hopefully repping those products. So what's an influencer, right? Influencers are people online that already have audiences that listen to them. And they, you know, they have tens of thousands of followers, if not more, on Instagram, subscribers on, on YouTube, all that. So I teach this, and when I teach this, you guys, and when you guys go and implement this, coupled with making sure that you are creating good value content out in the marketplace, because when you connect with these influencers, they're going to come and snoop on you. So you want to make sure that you're giving them something to, good to see, and you're building yourself up in their eye as a credible authority. Immediately when you guys put content out on a consistent basis, you're a credible authority. Even if you make no money in network marketing, you put consistent content out, you're a credible authority. There's a lot of influencers like Nadia said yesterday that have hundreds of thousands of followers that are making no money, but people are listening to them. Okay. So there's incredible opportunity on how to connect with these people. And I give you my script book on how to do it, but you have to be um, that person that they would even entertain to have a conversation with, put out consistent content and that will make you that person. So when you go to, I'm going to give you this, I'm going to share with you how powerful this is, by the way, there is a YouTuber out there. Her name is L Banks. Okay. E L L E Banks, B A N G S. She is a blonde hair specialist. Okay. She's got hundreds of thousands, if not now close to a million subscribers on YouTube. She started her YouTube channel. She's a hairstylist in San Francisco. She's got her own salon now. She started her YouTube station uh, channel to basically uh, build up her salon. And so she has a crap ton of eyeballs on her all the time. Okay. All the time. And uh, she talks about everything blonde hair and hair and stuff like that. And she, you know, she's, she's got a little bit of her affiliate links with like L'Oreal and stuff like in her description area of YouTube where she kind of like recommends products and sometimes she's recommending Amazon products. But I know, knowing what I know, like when somebody becomes an affiliate for something, um, there's not as much money monetary opportunity as if they have a network marketing opportunity. And so there is a network marketing company out there that there's a few now that specialize their whole product line is like revolved around hair products. Right. And so I, I was watching her YouTube video and I was looking at, uh, one of her newest videos. And then all of a sudden, and I've watched her channel for like years and all of a sudden she starts talking about these network marketing products. And I was like, Oh my goodness, this is awesome. I was like, somebody had a conversation with her about their network marketing opportunity because she has a following of hundreds of thousands of people. They're all watching her and taking her recommendations and suggestions when she recommends her hair products how congruent, she's already got the hair audience, this is a hair network marketing company, bam. Now can you imagine how much volume, how much volume she has produced for the person who shared the um, opportunity with her and actually know who that was. And it was a lot of freaking volume, you guys. So, so, and, and what she actually did, you guys, this was crazy too, this is 
on all of her hundreds of videos that she did in the past, she went back and she edited her descriptions of her videos to include her network marketing product link for everybody to go and like buy the product from. Now you guys, imagine one or just two of these influencers on your network marketing team. When they say, I recommend this, they have hundreds of thousands of eyeballs that go, I want that because the influencer that I look up to, I follow the Oprah factor, right? I want what they tell me is good for me and they're gonna go buy it. Imagine the volume that could happen. And so I want you guys to understand that building a brand also helps you in your prospecting efforts as well as yes attracts people to you but when you're going out there and you make the goal and, and what and you're taking notes right now this either needs to be a need to implement asap note or a good idea note i would probably move it on to the asap note is make a plan and a schedule for you and yourself and your team and teach it to your team to in, to talk to and reach out to two to five influencers every single week, okay? So make it a part of your actual plan and make sure that you're working this. Now talking to an influencer is a little bit different, so that's what we provide you with those scripts. So make sure that you go and download those scripts. It'll teach you how to reach out to them authentically and how to talk to them about moving into a business conversation on how you can help them and their followers with the good value that you guys have inside of your product. Okay. Rachel said it's an ASAP now. Okay. So where, where are they hanging out? They're hanging out like your people are all over the place. Okay. Your tribe, your people are all over the place. Where do you find people to talk to and add to your list? Everywhere. I'm going to tell you that if you're the person right now sitting there watching this and you're like, I just don't have any more people to talk to, you're just not being creative enough because there are people on Facebook, billions of them. There are people on Instagram, a billion of them. There are people on YouTube that already have audiences that your product and service can help and serve and it's a no brainer for them to take a look at what it is that you're doing if they're at all smart. And then there's people in forums online. There's other bloggers that you can try to find online um, just by going to Google and typing in your company product type, like weight, maybe you have a weight loss product. Maybe you, you want to try to find some weight loss influencers. You can find them just by using your friend Google. There's also meetup groups that you can go to in your local area. Obviously, not right now, but soon, okay? Um, so there's so many different step outside your house, go to the store. I mean, if people are telling you in your team, I've run out of people to talk to, I just want to grab their neck and strangle them. Like you guys, there's people everywhere. There's people everywhere. <laughs> okay. So, you know, it's just that we have to be creative. And I know like, you know, we, why we get paid so much in network marketing is because um, it, the, because we do what most people are not willing to do. And if most people, if it was easy and if it was really made for absolutely everybody to make like the six, seven figures, then everybody would be, but that's why the opportunity is there. Um, and so anyways, let me get off my soapbox. People are absolutely everywhere. And when you build your, build your brand, then people start to look at you like a credible figure and somebody said do you have to have a ton of followers you guys again stop thinking about you think about the content that you're putting out there the people that you are serving it's not about a popularity contest it is about you putting out good value and being very consistent with that the followers come with that later though guys but it starts with you focusing on giving them something good to follow, okay? And by the way, guys, people sometimes that have uh, those big followings, sometimes they're not even real. So, you know, it's not about how many people follow you. It's, you know, people can go up and pay for followers. By the way, never do that ever, 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 never pay for followers or fake fans for popularity viewing. Um, it will either get you shut down on that social media channel, but it will wreck your algorithm completely and you can't ever get that back. I know people have done that, so just don't do that. Just provide good value on a consistent basis 
and the followers will, will come, okay? Think about who your audience is and who you're talking to when you show up for them with your content. What are they into? What are they not like? John said yesterday some of the best, um, <laughs> some of the best uh, uh, posts that he does on social media are controversial, right? And so why are they controversial? He knows that network marketers hate. And so sometimes when he pokes the bear and posts something, and I don't do this all the time, but it's good to do it once in a while, engagement to kind of stir things up a little bit. It meets them where they're at. And that's the goal, like meeting your person where they're at in their own head and getting in front of them as like the person that says, I feel you, I get you, I understand you, right? Um, you got to know what your people are struggling with. Right now, we know what kind of everyone's struggling with. So we, we can use that to our opportunity to create lemonade out of lemons, right? And here's a really cool tip. I'm gonna give you one of my juiciest ones. So if you guys are, are just kind of half asleep still from the morning or half paying attention, this is where your coffee needs to kick in, okay? This is one of the best strategies that I have to share with you for those people who are like, I do not know what to post on social media. I run into brain blocks every single day. I have posted, I think, everything I know how to post on social media. I am at a loss that you don't know what to post anymore, okay? It's called Google Magazine Cover, Search Magazine Covers. Okay, that's not like the official name, but it's my boring makeup name of it. Google Search Magazine Covers, it sounds very official, right? So here's how it works, okay? Um, you go to Google and you type in who your tribe is and then magazines. Okay. So for example, if you have like your, your tribe, you know, that you, most of the people that you kind of show up for on social media, let's say they're like mothers or moms, right? You kind of relate to other moms out there because you're a mom yourself. Then you go to Google and you type in mom or mother's magazine. And then you go to images. Okay, so images are like up here, right? So instead of just like the search, you go to images, all right? And then it's going to give you the images of all of the mother or parenting magazines that are out there. And guess what, you guys? The magazines, the magazine companies, right? They pay tens of thousands of dollars for copywriters and editors to write their most juiciest catch headlines and sub headlines on the covers of the magazines because they want their magazines to be purchased impromptly at the source, right? Immediately at the source. So if you scroll down, you know, and you start looking through these magazines, you start seeing some of the sub headlines, like, um, you know, one of these is, uh, let's see here. Uh, my eyes are like, my eyes are kind of going, but um, 316 uh, best ever baby buys, okay? So you might be like, I don't want to do 316, but I'll do five. So I'm going to do five best baby buys of 2020 and maybe create a little piece of content or shoot a video about that for your audience. You know, so you, a lot of these might not be relevant, but a lot of them are relevant. And so you could spend for the entire month, okay, uh, for content for your brand, spend um, 30 minutes, okay, going through the magazine covers, finding ideas to do content around that you know that your audience will already like. The editors of these magazines and copywriters and magazines already did the hard work for us in knowing what our audience wants, and they're, it's right there in front of us. We just need to go get some ideas on what kind of content to bring into our brand and into our social media posting. Thank you guys for saying that this is awesome. I thought this was a pretty awesome tip, all right? I really do. So you can take a look, like, you know, um, here, uh, this one, oh, this one's better, I can read it, right? 23 healthy meals in under 10 minutes. Okay, this is from the magazine Working Mother, <laughs> right? Save money, discover hidden tax breaks. Easy play dates are a quick tip for low fuss fun. Uh, the discipline mistake even good parents make. So, um, are you hooked? Why coffee shopping and texting may be hurting you? These are all 
very strategically put together to get people to buy the magazine. So if you use some of these headlines to help you create your content or your Facebook lives, don't you think that they just would be like a home run to that audience if that to your audiences? Um, never feel guilty again. It's passable. We promise. So that's a need like that, you know, that moms have, or that's a negative that you know that moms have is maybe feeling guilty. So maybe you do a Facebook live about how to stop feeling guilty as a working mother. And then, you know, you have a call to action for them to reach out to you if you, if you want to teach them how to work from home, right? Um, how my kid is nothing like me. The secrets to raising your opposite. These are kind of fun. You can get probably some really good juicy ideas from this, okay? Um, I just put this on the screen because I thought for my ladies out there, these guys are really easy on the eyes. So, you know, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But no, let's say you have a, a male audience. You're a man on the, the call, right? So um, you, you, you might, and maybe you're in fitness or whatever, right? There's Best Life Magazine, three vitamins men should never take. Oh my gosh, if you did a, a Facebook live on that and you actually knew what they were, go to Google, find out what people are saying, like men should never take and why, and then regurgitate that information, right? Back to your audience. And then if you have better supplements in your company that you think are for people, you can have a suggestion or recommendation for people to reach out to you and say like, hey, even though these are the vitamins you shouldn't take, um, I recommend and suggest taking some vitamins I'm incorporated into my life and here why. And if you'd like to learn more about that, hit me up. I'd love to share with you um, how it can help you. And I'd, I'd also love to learn about what some of your specific fitness and health goals are so I can direct you and steer you correctly, right? Um, build a beach body, um, see results in just 10 days. Like that's cool, right? Um, burn fat fast with chili, but make sure that you buy the right chili, you know, land your dream job. There's all things like if you had a male audience, these are all things that men are very interested in. So you could create a lot of, you could create a lot of um, content and ideas for Facebook Lives around looking at these magazine covers, okay? So yeah, and so for anybody that has ever been through my training on this and inside of this boot camp, if I ever hear anybody say, I don't know what to post on social media any anymore, like, I don't know why, maybe because my mother was on my neck, no, I'm just kidding. I want to do it to everybody else. No, I mean, my mom was German, but she didn't have my neck. Um, well, I feel a little strict. <laughs> so I will get a little strict on you if I hear that everybody, if anybody hears this, I don't know what to post on social media anymore. We've debunked it completely. We all agree, all right? Um, and yes, you could definitely use this in your ATM group. Of course, of course, it's a prospecting group. And if you want to show value, that's what the goal is. Yes, definitely. Um, the goal of it is with your brand, right? I mean, it's all about creating good content, being consistent with that, but don't overcomplicate it and have fun. Um, I want you to really post the things that excite you, that get you excited to talk about. You guys, I am genuinely, genuinely and authentically excited about entrepreneurship. And some people love talking about that and some people don't. If you don't love talking about business and entrepreneurship, that's not what excites you. You don't have to do that to create success in network marketing. I get a lot of people that view into Ray Higdon and John and Nadia and myself and Eric Warre and you've got like all these network marketing trainers now that are popping up and people think like, oh my gosh, I have to train network marketing to be successful. I don't know if I'm like, I'm not even successful yet in network marketing. How can I train in network marketing? You don't have to train in network marketing. You just have to show consistently with the content that fires you up and serves the tribe that you want to serve and be circled around. That might be moms, that might be dads, that might be other fitness gurus, that might be other hairstylists, it might be other skin and um, beauty uh, consultants or enthusiasts. It doesn't have to be other network marketers or just network marketing training. And I think that that is really important to bring up. Um, okay. So what I want to do right now is do one thing. Can I, I'm going to do a little bit. I'm going to bring John and Nadia back out um, because I want to 
see if there's any questions revolved around that. And then I want to see if maybe we want to go into influencer storytelling um, first, or we do want to do an implementation session. John, what do you think? Implementation session? Um, we definitely can. Um, just a couple things I'd like to add that I, that I because you, yeah. you totally crushed this training. The, the comments are amazing. And I think just like the magazine titles, I mean, that, that in itself should help all of you come up with content. And then, you know, obviously you test and tweak. Tanya talked about that. You're not always going to know what's going to hit best with your audience, but definitely pay attention. This is what Nadia and I had to do when we first started putting out content. We paid attention to our energy. Like, I enjoy talking about certain things while other things I struggle through it because it's not something I'm as passionate about. Um, it's good to test it out and, and, and try out different things because sometimes people get caught up in, well, what's my brand? What should I talk about? You have to play with it. This is why we started doing our video challenges uh, years ago because people would struggle with that. So we're like, look, just do a video every day for 30 days. And within 30 days, you'll have a pretty good idea of what you enjoy talking about, what gives you the most energy, the most joy, what you're most passionate about. And you'll see how your audience responds what questions you're getting, and eventually you get to a point, and I know Tanya can relate to this, you almost have so much you could talk about that it's actually hard. We're, we battle with the challenge on the other side of it, not coming up with content, but to choose what type of content we want to share and talk about because we can go in so many different directions. So I think that's important. And, and just what it boils down to when building a personal brand, it's really your reputation. You know, what do people think about you when they think about you? You know, how can people find you? How can you show up uh, in the marketplace? Like Tanya said, it's all about consistency, but, you know, really it boils down to you grinding even when you don't feel like it, you showing up even when you don't feel like it, you putting out a piece of content. It doesn't always have to be video. You know, Tanya talked about it. She just does a weekly show. You know, we started our Money Mondays as a weekly show. So for some of us that maybe don't want to do videos every day, uh, you know, maybe you do more with your stories. Maybe uh, you share tips, but you do it via text, right? Where it's like a picture of you and then you share tips. You see, you see a lot of that on Instagram, right? Where people will share tips with a picture. So it's not as much video, but I still think if you were to compare apples to apples, video is the most powerful way for you to show up and identify what your brand's gonna be, what your messaging is gonna be. And then as far as finding people, you know, we have gotten that question quite a bit over the years, even inside of this boot camp. I just wanna reiterate when it comes to, you know, finding people, Facebook groups, fan pages, business pages, hashtags that have the ideal person you would wanna work with, you would wanna communicate with, you would want to build a relationship with. What do they follow? What groups are they in? What business pages do they follow? And if you're all up in those networks, if you're engaging with people that are engaging in those groups, on those hashtags, on those business pages, and you're friending those people up, and you're not there to pitch and sell, you're there to provide value, answer questions, build relationships, and have real connection, you will never run out of people to talk to. And, and then you got to start getting creative. You know, maybe when you get inside of some of these groups, how many of us join groups and that's all we do? We just join the group and we're just, we're just in the group. How about you step it up and you actually post a selfie of yourself and introduce yourself and who you are? Again, this is not a time to pitch. This is not a time to, to sell, but just introduce yourself. Imagine if you just took time every day or, you know, several times a week just to, to share content and provide value inside of these private communities. Maybe you even build a relationship with the admin and you ask them, hey, I could do a training on this topic or I could share a piece of content in your community. So all these little things, just getting creative and finding more ways to build relationships, build a connection, you know, connect with people. And, and by the way, it doesn't have to be. Sometimes when we hear influencer, we think it means reaching out to like celebrities and people with millions of followers. The truth is, and I shared this yesterday, you know, there are 9 million people on Instagram with over 10,000 followers. 
and only 10% of them monetize, 10% of them. Heck, there's people on Instagram and Facebook only have two or 3,000 you know, friends or followers, and they have great social equity. They do a post, they do a video, it gets a ton of engagement. I just look for people that have good social equity. They get good engagement on their social media. Like those are people I always want to connect with. Of course, we're not going to prejudge people. You know, we'll work with anyone, you know, network marketing, you know, you, you never want to, you never want to prejudge someone and assume that they can't have success, right? If someone would have prejudged me when I was 20 years old and had three earrings and a tongue ring, right? They would have, they would have been prejudging me, not knowing that one day I'd become a seven figure earner. But how many of us have limited time? How many of us are busy? How many of us are like wanting to find those great people that are already qualified to crush it? Because, you know, in my early years, I struggled. It did not happen overnight for me. So you'd rather recruit me seven years in than recruit me when I'm 20 years old. I'm sure that makes sense to everybody. So as much as we don't want to prejudge, we should talk to everyone. If you have limited time and you're thinking, who are those best people? Tanya nailed it, right? Recruiting up, going after people with great reputations, great integrity, you know, good humans that you would want to do life with, you'd want to go on vacation with, you'd want to spend time with. Those are the people that you definitely want to connect with. If you have limited time, pay attention to them. And then Nadia, did, did you say something? You walked by. Give an example of scrapbooking. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's actually a good one. So we had this woman uh, who felt like she didn't have a great warm market, but she was really into scrapbooking. So she joined a bunch of scrapbooking groups. I didn't, the reason I remember this story so well, because I didn't know that was really a thing. I didn't know like scrapbooking was like a thing you could go brand around, but apparently it's a big deal and there's a lot of women that are into it. And you know, she's like, hey, I'm really into scrapbooking. I'm kind of an expert. So she joined a bunch of Facebook groups, friended up a bunch of people in the groups, not going in there and just friending them up, like hitting friend, 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 friend requests. But like going in there and sharing tips and showing her scrapbooks and answering questions and networking in these groups. And then a lot of those individuals started friending her up. She friended them up. They started connecting one-on-one -on -one and messenger and stuff. So when she would promote her weight loss product, when she would do a curiosity post, a lot of the women that she connected with also wanted to lose 10, 20, 30 pounds. And she was having some success with the, with the product. So she did over 3,000 in sales her first month of doing that. She essentially got on one of our trainings and heard she should join Facebook groups with people that are like her, that are interested in the same thing she's interested in. And uh, she, within 30 days, sold $3,000 in weight loss products to people she didn't even know 30 days prior. So anyway, I can go on and on and on about this, but I know, Tanya, uh, you wanted to, to uh, do an implementation session. I think we should absolutely do that. But... I just wanted to share some of my uh, my two cents on this. Yeah, no, I love it. I mean, that's, it gives people ideas, it gives people perspective. I mean, this is what we're here for. I mean, real life stories are more powerful than just like theory training. I, mean, like, I get more out of those real life stories than I do at like, hey, do this like a robot. You know, that's what we're here for. Um, before we get into the implementation session, I want to actually incorporate this into the implementation session. Um, I really want to teach you guys how to tell your story and other people's story really quickly. So I'm going to take a few minutes to do that because um, I wish I would have known this earlier in my career of network marketing or somebody would have shared this with me. And I actually got, um, I got this out of um, the book called Get Over Your Damn Stuff by Romy Lucette. Um, and I think it is a really good network marketing book. It's more women driven, um, so if you're a woman, but you got if you're a guy, you gotta pay attention to like the woman stuff because women build network marketing companies like quick print, right? Yeah, I, so, I would say my team is 90% women. So I listened yeah. to that book. A lot of it is very old school strategies, but the philosophy and how she works with women, yeah, it's absolutely, yeah, I agree 100%. Yeah. And she broke it down. There was a couple things I really liked in that book where she broke down things to very simple. And obviously, if we break things down to very simple, it's like, oh, yeah, I can do that. that that's easy, right? right? So one of the things that she broke down that was, I think, simple was, have to tell your story, 
And she had a little formula for that. And then I kind of made it my own. Um, and I thought it was really, really, really cool to learn how to tell your story because this be, this be more like your story. Like when I, um, when I work with John in like a three-way chat message, or I work with any of my team in a three-way chat message, or I'm talking to somebody about maybe how I got started and what it is that I do, being able to tell your story in a paragraph is very, very, very powerful. Okay. So when, when I, I get into a three-way chat with one of my team members, they, I, that's how I introduce them. Like, Hey, here's my story. And I make it as relatable as possible. And it's not about making you look flashy or how much money you've made or whatever. It's about being vulnerable, about being relatable. And then what, what ends up happening and what, what should end up happening is now your story becomes part of you in everything that it is that you do. It becomes a part of you in when you do your Facebook Live and your introduction, when you're talking to people, when you're even working with your team. So I want to teach you guys in this session um, how to tell your story, but then also you can use the same formula to create a story bank and how to tell other people's stories. Yeah. All right. Let's dive into this. We're going to take some notes. And there also is a, um, there also is a, uh, um, uh, a template that goes with this, by the way, you guys. So in the, in the PDFs, right, and in the downloads, there is a branding template that we have for you. So you can kind of go through that. Um, but there also is a storytelling template. And that's going to be part of what we're going to do for our inner implementation session um, coming up in about 10 minutes. Okay. So um, I want to get you understanding how to tell your story. There's a formula to this. And here's what you want to do. Like when you're going to your company events, when you're on your company training calls, when you're in your company Facebook groups, when you're doing interviews with, with maybe some success stories or whatever on your, on your team crosswind, and which by the way, interviews are a really good way to get exposure and excitement going what it is that you do. Um, you're learning someone's story. And what I want to know from somebody is where they were before, here's the before and after state again, like where they were before, what was going on in life, why they found value in taking a look, and what life is like now because of that, okay? And when you can tell a story in that fashion, you pique a lot of interest. All right, you keep a lot of interest and you get into the heart of somebody making a decision. And people, um, people uh, buy from their heart, they back up their purchase with their brand logic. It all starts with the heart. When you can get in here, a lot of things can happen. This is what really good marketers, just in general, know how to do, is they know how to pull authentically and um and ethically to the heartstrings okay so storytelling remember i said this before facts tell stories sell this is why we want to get good at doing this so you need to get really good at learning how to tell your story and other people's stories sometimes maybe it's not relevant to tell your story but it's more relevant to tell somebody else's story or give somebody else's experience okay so um, build a story bank that can relate. So for me, here's what I did. I learned this probably about seven years ago. So I have a journal. Um, I wish I actually had it upstairs, with me, but I have a journal. And in my journal, I have 10 stories of people in my network marketing business that I share sometimes depending on who I'm talking to and what one will relate best to. And so I have, I just try to think about all the different types of people that I could be talking to, right? I could be talking to a stay-at-home mom. I could be talking to a teacher. I could be talking to a self-employed professional. I could be talking to somebody who's like super influential on social media. I could be talking to a chiropractor or a doctor or some sort of professional trades person like that. Um, I could be talking to a restaurant owner. So I start thinking about the different people that mainly are out there that I could be talking to. And then what I want to do is I want to go and find stories in my network marketing company of people that might have a similar background 
And I want to ask them and I want to extract, and sometimes you don't have to ask them, sometimes they just tell their story at the company events. And I actually write down highlights, what their names are, who they're from, what they did, what life like was, what life was like before, um, why they saw value in the products or opportunity, and what life is like now for them. And so I write that down in a paragraph and make it my own. And I kind of go through and I, I memorize those and I create those as huge workable assets in my business. Okay, you guys. So again, this is a little bit more advanced, but you guys, that's why we're here. And this is the stuff that the professionals, the pros in network marketing, um, or even in sales in general, this is what they do. This is why we make big money is because we invest in learning these skill sets and using these assets in our business. We don't just expect things to work. We know what works when we go make it happen. So I created these little story banks and I memorized them so that if I'm talking to anybody that is a nurse or a teacher or a mortgage broker or anything like that, I can take the story and I can say, Oh, by the way, you know, I just want to share a really cool story. There, there's somebody that that's similar that works with us in our company, and uh, they were their mortgage broker out in Texas. John and Nancy, they have uh, two kids. They're in their teens, and you know, John and John was working all of these crazy hours as a mortgage broker. He was working weekends. He was working nights. People were calling him. It was absolutely crazy. He made a lot of really good money at that time. But he absolutely had no time family. Nancy started to get a little bit upset because he started missing soccer games the weekends of their kids, missing like their kids' big highlight moments. And so when they actually saw what our company could possibly do for them and their family and some of the time freedom it could allot for them without sacrificing the income that John was able, that John was um, used to making, um, you know, they got involved in, in four years, John was able to actually replace all of the income that he was making as a mortgage broker. So he had the decision, do I stay as a mortgage broker or do I just kind of like work from home and hang with the family and have fun on the weekends with the kids? And uh, I guess what he decided to do, because now he's been totally crushing it with our business, but he has to spend all of the time with his family and kids and go on these cool vacations that he's ever wanted to do. And it's just a better quality of life for him. So I just want to share that story because, you know, he had a similar profession and some struggles that maybe you sound like maybe you're having as well. So I just want to share what's possible in what it is that we do, right? Um, so you guys, I, I'm good at telling these stories now because I wrote them down and I practiced them. I wrote them down and I practiced them. I wrote them down and I practiced them. So that's the goal with, with your story banks because if you just say, you know, yeah, you should do this, you know, you should do this business, and they um, they can't, it's not on their heart. Like they can't envision, like your, your job as a network marketer is to paint the vision for somebody, okay? And so this is where stories come in, your story and other people's story as well, okay? So telling your story, you're gonna get a template and they're just gonna fill in the blanks and then you're gonna put it all together. So I'm gonna give you an example here and we're gonna dive in about three to five minutes, okay? So on this template, you're gonna fill in the blank, who are you and where have you been, okay? So here's an example. Um, for me, before network marketing, you guys, like I said, I was in finance, I was working six days a week, 12 hours a day. So I've been working six days a week, 12 hours a day at my finance job, okay? Simple, that's done, we're gonna go to the next thing, let's see how this all comes together, all right? What's happened in your life? Okay, so to cause you to look for something more. So as a young woman that wants to raise a family one day, I want more flexibility to control my own schedule without sacrificing my income. I also want to spend more time with my friends and family on the weekends. This was a huge wish that I've always had, and I finally found a way to make it happen. Okay, and you can use a lot of mine if it relates to what it is that you want to do, but you guys, do you see here that I don't talk about how much money I want to make or fancy cars that I want to drive or any of that stuff that's not going to pull all the time to somebody's heartstrings. It depends. Like if you're talking to a red personality type person, like somebody who's really money motivated, those kinds of things can relate. But um, why do people want to make the money, right? It's not like I wanted to make $10,000. Like imagine how I just want to make $10,000 a month. 
people are like, okay, yeah, so what? It's, okay, so even if you do want to make $10,000 a month, what do you want to do with that money that you, that you can't do now without that money? So dive a little deep, get a little vulnerable here, right? And then next thing is how you heard about your company and why you had to be a part of it. So my friends found a Nani Melton share company and system with me that has allowed me to be a full-time, uh, that has allowed them to be full-time parents to their son and daughter, and I've watched them grow lifestyle with their kids that most people dream of. I immediately recognized this was a way to build my exit strategy for my super demanding job and to build a lifestyle I really want. Okay, so you're gonna fill in for you, and it might be very similar, right? You can you can you can swipe some of this, right? You can swipe some of this. Um, what is it doing for you, or what it's going to do for you? So maybe you have a pretty success yet, but what's it going to do? Um, I'm excited to have something that I can build for my phone or computer around my job, and all the other things I have going on. I'm excited to help others do the same. Okay, it could be as simple as that. Now, tying it all together. Okay, this is where the magic happens. You take all those things that you fill in the blank, really simple. You tie it all together. I've been working six days a week, 12 hours a day at my finance job. And as a young woman that really wants to raise a family one day, I wanted more flexibility to control my own schedule without sacrificing my income. I also wanted to spend more time with my friends and family on the weekends. Um, this was a huge wish that I've always had, and I finally found a way to make it happen. My friends, John and Nani Elton shared a company and system with me that has allowed them to build a full-time, uh, has allowed them to be full-time parents to their son and daughter, and I've watched them grow a lifestyle with their kids that most people dream of. I immediately recognized this was a way to build my exit strategy for my super demanding job and to build a lifestyle I really want. I'm excited to have something that I can build for my phone or computer around my job and all the other things I have going on. And I'm excited to help others do the same. Okay. So my story, your story, are you guys ready for it? So practice make permanent. Um, first, what you want to do is you want to write this down. So I obviously sat down and I wrote this out, right? And I just got really real with it. It was really simple. It wasn't, you know, crazy complicated or anything. And um, and then I used the same formula to tell other stories. So this is where I built my story bank with um, with other people, right? So interview people with these exact same questions. And heck, you can even use the template that we're giving you and ask maybe your upline or sideline or anybody in your team that has a good story to say, hey, can you do me a favor? I'm building my story bank to help others really see and capture the vision of what our products or what our business can do for people. Can you do me a favor? Can you fill this out for me so I can learn to tell your story um, so that we can inspire others together? And so this is how you're gonna you build, your, build your story bank. Or what you can do is you can interview people um, like we do even. We interview people in our ATM group, right? And this is this is a really cool way to learn these uh, things from people to have something to share as an asset. And this is leverage, you guys. If you don't want to get good at memorizing these stories, if you do the interviews and you ask on these interviews these exact same questions to extract the stories from the people making it happen in your company, now you have that video in your ATM group okay, that you can peg people to, and you better believe it, in our ATM group that we use, we have strategically put together these interviews to interview all different types of people that we know that we could be talking to that might relate to a prospect that we could tag our prospects into these interviews, okay? I love it. We've got an ASAP note happening right now, right? And the thing, the, the thing to remember with it is to get vulnerable. Vulnerability is going to be key. It's going to be the thing that relates most. So if they really had a down, down time, you know, things were kind of bad, and then now they have this, you know, either product or this um, opportunity that's really helped them, what were the things that were specifically bad? Like we've heard stories of people having to go into foreclosure or bankruptcy and didn't think that there was any other options for them. And then they had somebody share network marketing with them and they were able to make a go of it. And so those things are important to share 
not to be a Debbie Downer, but there are other people going through some of those same things that other people can really truly relate to and find a common ground with, with these people, right? So this is, um, it's important. So create a story bank. This, you know, very important. It can be a good idea and something to implement ASAP, but this is what will help you close the most sales, relate to most of your people, and also help you build up your brand. So it's going to be your turn, you guys. Um, I'm going to bring the mountains back out here, and we are going to give you an implementation session, all right, um, because it's about that time. It's about that time in our schedule. Um, hold on one sec, I'm going to bring them back. Oh, they look so gorgeous. That was so good. Bring them for the time. Okay, good. And you guys, there are PDFs for this, okay? Some people are asking for the slides, but everything that we share in the slides that are going to be pertinent to that topic, we actually made it better for you. Instead of the slides, we yeah. made you PDFs that are even more fancy than our slides. So the template, the branding, um, all of that is in PDF downloads for you guys um, to fill. And actually, one of them you're going to be using right now to do your implementation session. So before we get into that, is there anything on that that you guys would like to share at all when it comes to storytelling? Well, one thing I was gonna say too, and I mentioned this yesterday, but for those of you that capture great stories, uh, or maybe you wanna save your own responses, like, cause I'm added to so many prospecting chats mm -hmm. that I have a text story that I share mm -hmm. and I copy and paste that in all my, all my chats. And then I also have uh, an audio. It's like a one minute audio. And I just basically have all of that stuff saved. I think I mentioned this yesterday, but you can message yourself on Messenger. You can send things to yourself. Oh, so they're such all saved. A good tip. What's that? This is such a good tip. This yeah. is the best tip. You say this thing, I mean, people, this is so powerful. And I see my voice recorded. Yep. Do I want text? Doesn't matter how you do it. But make it generic. So say it again. This is such a good tip. Yeah. So I basically have like my story uh, in that message. So I just forward that same message to people all the time. And it's cool too because there's there's other things like how many of us, you know, you get the same questions over and over again. And, you know, sure, you might have all that stuff saved in your team Facebook group, but I just like the convenience of it being in my messenger. So this is literally, and you don't need to like necessarily see what it is, but this is me. I mean, this is my inbox to myself. So I have your like message on Facebook. Yeah, on, on Facebook Messenger. Yeah. So yeah, I have Facebook like our, our and different the message. Yes. Yeah. So I have my different kits. I have like audio clips that I'll forward, uh, certain articles that I want to send to people. People ask for the comp plan. So I have the PDF for the comp plan in here. Um, just some different things that I know I'm going to constantly forward out to people. And it's just so easy just to send it all to yourself so you can easily forward it from yourself. And for some of us, this might be confusing, but literally just search yourself on Messenger. You can send yourself a message and now it is in the inbox of you. Make sense? So, yeah, and then, so and then there's little, sometimes the devices are different, but there's when you send yourself a message, that message has a little square right beside it right. with like a little arrow. And if you click that, it means it's forwarding and you can forward that to anybody in your messenger. Right. So instead of copying and pasting, which you can also do, sure. yep. but, but if you didn't want to copy and paste, because mine actually have a voice message that I use for, for mine. Yeah, so right. I, have to, I, I do a generic like, oh my gosh, it's so great to meet you. I'm so excited that you're meeting one of my business partners. I'm really excited to get to know you more. I'm right. so excited to take a look at the information. We work as a close team and we are here to help you with any questions that you have. Excited to learn more about you and what it is that you want to do and to help you. Um, let us know any of your questions that you possibly might have. I do that as a voice record. Yeah. I send that to myself on Messenger. And then I forward that to any of my three-way chats because I used to do it all manually. And then I was like, wait a minute. Right. <laughs> you know? If um, you can do manual, like, Bobby, it's so awesome to meet you. Excited you're taking a look at the information. And then you just send that. That takes three seconds. 
And then you send that 59 seconds, minus 59 seconds, it's just an audio of me telling my story. And, mm -hmm. you know, I actually started doing it because so many people <laughs> copied what I was using for like, you know, the story where it's like a text type message, right? So, so many people, were, and it was fine that they were using it, but I was like, if I kind of use mine and they're using that, like it just, it looks weird. We're kind of saying the same stuff. So I recorded an audio so that way it can just mix it up. Anyway, yeah, it's so powerful to just have those messages. And, and again, it's because you're getting these same messages set up, the same questions. Mm -hmm. So you can just have it there. So it's real easy to forward. Awesome. Yeah. Totally. And any of those little tech tips that you're right. hearing? that you're like, and then maybe you go to apply and you're like, how is that again? Um, you know, just, you can always find a way to do it with Google and your friend, friend on Google, you can do that. Um, we also, John also, our, Nadia is the queen of tech tutorials, you guys. Literally, you know, Thank tech you. I shall so, receive it. I like it. It's true. <laughs> She's a tech tutorial genius, all right? So there's probably something that the team can refer over to you. Yeah. Now that we created, it. Yeah, there. and we created. If you have not seen it just yet, we put together a master Q and A document, and we're going to be including some screenshots we already have. But for those little things that you can integrate into your workflows, check that out too. That's going to be really, really helpful. Yeah. Now, you guys, I, I, quickly, I want to make sure that we are all on the same page, but we did create unit number two for today. So that way, all of the resources that you're going to need, we already loaded all of the PDF resources. So what Tanya is referring to for the implementation session, if you haven't clicked into that unit just yet, go ahead and click and be ready to be mesmerized. Mm. It is gorgeous. It is ready for you to print out and get to work. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, so here's, here's what our implementation session is going to involve now. And we'll take, let me see. Um, ooh, we had, uh, we're going to take till 12 PM. Okay till 12 p.m. East Coast time. Uh, so it's roughly about 30 minutes to do this implementation session, okay? Mm -hmm. um, we are going to follow the story template, okay, uh, that you guys have, and you're gonna write out your story. And then what we want you to do is plan out your Facebook Live to share your story yeah. and you just start your story bank, okay? 30 minutes. And then our face, like you don't have to do the Facebook Live, but you wanna plan it out. Now, I would suggest that you do one of these, oh my God, a thing is coming, okay? Post where you can like ease your audience a little bit with a selfie of you writing in your journal. This is how I would do it, guys. I would have like my notebook and I would have my pen and then I would have the template that I was working with and I would do a selfie of me writing or getting ready to write in my journal my story and then I would say I would I would keep curiosity with that selfie and get it out on Facebook and be like hey guys tonight at 7 p.m. it's about to go down and I'm about to share some things that I've never shared before so stay tuned and then maybe you guys go live at 7 p.m. But plan that out. It might not be 7 p.m. for you, different time zones or whatever. But I would say um, make sure that you get that planned out because we're going to turn that, your story into a why Facebook Live, another one. But it's going to be it's going to be a little bit more clear as we move through the next section. So we'll get started with the planning. We'll get started with your power story template and worksheet that hopefully you guys got printed out mm -hmm. and you're working inside of. Um, so let's go crush it and then we will be back at 12 p.m. East Coast time. Do I have the time right? You guys, 12 p.m. That, that is absolutely okay. yeah, correct. 30, 30 minutes. Yeah, Nine. Nine. I'll go back at 12 o'clock. Yes. And okay, then we'll, guys. Go, we'll go another hour. Yeah, 12 to lunch, 1. And then lunch one will be at 1. Lunch. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Okay. I love okay. it. Okay. In the next All session, right. we'll be talking about curiosity posts. Ooh, oh, don't want to miss it. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be so amazing. All right, guys. See you soon.